to first thank you the almighty Allah for enabling us to be here today. Secondly, I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, for seeing it fit to, be, to bestow this great honor of hosting a national celebration, Mashuja Day in Kwale. Watu wa kwale wanafura kwa kutuheshimisha Mheshimiwa Rais. Your Excellency, allow me to congratulate the heroes and heroines of our country. Your Excellency, kwale pia haijaachwa nyuma kwa mambo ya boma yangu. We have donated 50 acres of land for the affordable housing program. And uh, tunakushukuru, Your Excellency, uliwaza kutuanzishia the first site in Kwale, amayo completion date ni 20, uh, December 2015, 2025. Your Excellency, the entire program, imeleta employment opportunities to our people. The Joakani sector is thriving. Mheshimiwa Rais mtakuwa mpungufu wa fadhila iwapo sitataja ufadhili ambao umeufanya wa kukamilisha stadium hii leo ambayo tumekaa Pokea shukra nyingi kutoka kwa wakwale lakini pia tunashukuru kwa muda mfupi kwa zile barabara ambazo pia zimeweza kuboreshwa ndani ya municipality ya Kwale na vile vile pia diani. Your Excellency tunashukuru kwa muda mfupi tumeweza kupata mini state lodge ndani ya jimbo hili. Your Excellency tunataka tushukuru pia for the partnership in a number of projects uh, within the county. Ya kwanza ikiwemo project ya Kipes ambayo iko mwananyamala na stimulus pro, uh, market program ambayo tayari ulianzisha pale diani na hivi karibuni ile ya kinango na lungalunga 
nayo pia itaweza kuanza Your Excellency this week I hosted my fellow female governors in Kwale tukafungua oncology center hapa Kwale hospital This being a month ya ku celebrate ama ya create awareness kwa mambo ya kansa ningewauliza tu wa Kenya wote tuweze kupitia katika vituo vya afya tuweze kujua hali yetu kwa mambo ya saratani kwa sababu early detection saves lives your excellency women empowerment and youth empowerment is dear to me in under my leadership your excellency nimeweza kuunganisha vijana na kina mama wakaweza kuunda kampuni na in the last financial year tumeweza kuunda kampuni mia mbili na zaidi ya kampuni 30 ziliweza kupata tender za county government na national government asante sana your excellency your excellency uh, uh, county government imeweza ku achieve kwa mambo mengi including water uh, through construction of small and medium dams uh, tutengeneza pia mambo ya micro irrigation uh, improvement of uh, different sectors uh, your excellency Kwale is a proof that devolution is working. Uh, Kwale County uh, boasts of withstanding coastal landscape, pristine white sandy beaches, wildlife and also it's also rich a cultural and heritage of its people, making it top choice proof that devolution is working and inter international tourists. Your Excellency uh, last Friday Kwale County received Diani was voted Africa's leading beach destination 2024 and not only leading beach destination our hotels including Baba Beach Resort Diamond Leisure Lodge Swahili Beach Hotel Leopard Beach Hotel and Chale Island won but in various categories in Africa as we continue to make significant progress in matters infrastructure governance and economic growth i'm confident that Kwale county will thrive as a place where business tourism and community flourish your excellency i made a pledge to the people of Kwale that I will serve them diligently. Today to your excellency, nimeendelea kuwafanyia wakazi wakazi wa Kwale kazi bila ya ubaguzi na tunasema ni tolwa. Na nina imani hawatoachana na achani. As I conclude your excellency, the people of Kwale wameniuliza nikushukuru sana kwa kutuma mheshimiwa waziri chirchir akaja akatembelea barabara ya Kinango na kazi nzuri imeendelea pale barabara ya Kinango na tunategemea we are very hopeful that in the next 18 months the road will be fully tarmacked your excellency as we gather today to celebrate our mashujaa Allow me to extend a warm and hearty welcome to all our esteemed guests, dignitaries and fellow Kenyans to our beautiful county of Kwale. Kindly explore and enjoy all that Kwale has to offer. This is destination Kwale. Karibuni sana Kwale. Happy Mashujaa Day to all. Thank you very much. Tumpigie tena makofi nasikia hapa wanasema hatuachani na achani. Wapi makofi ya governor? Asante sana governor. Your excellency with your permission now 
allow me to invite His Excellency, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Musalia Mudavadi, who will in turn invite His Excellency, the President. Tumpige Makofi Tafadali, welcome, sir. Mweshmua Rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya, Honorable William Samoy Ruto, First Lady Wetu, Mama Rachel Ruto, Deputy President Muteule, Professor Kiture Kindiki, Mawaziri Wenzangu, Magavana, Na pia nitambue speaker wa bunge letu la kitaifa Moses Wetangula na speaker wa seneti Amazon Kingi MCS wote viongozi wa tabaka mbalimbali ambao wako, wako hapa mashujaa wote wa taifa letu hoye hoye kwale hoye Sijesikia kwale hoye Asante sana Mweshmua Rais Kwa kifupi sana Ningependa tukusema kwamba Kenya ni inchi ya ajabu Kenya is truly an amazing country Kuna vitengo mbali mbali vya ki serekali ama tasisi mbali mbali Kuna executive ambayo unaongoza Kuna judiciary ambayo ni mahakama Pia kuna legislature ambayo inaongoza na speakers wetu Na wakuwa majority ambayo wako hapa Na hawa wote kusema ukweli Kuna judiciary Hizi institutions zetu zote Zimonyesha kwamba demokrasia ni kitu cha muhimu Na wamepata changamoto nyingi Lakini kupitia kwa sheria ya kitaifa Na kulingana na katiba yetu Tumedhibitisha kwamba hivi vitengo ama hizi tasisi Zinafanya kazi Kwa hivyo leo tuko hapa Kuonyesha kwamba Kenya itazidi kudumisha demokrasia na kuhakikisha kwamba tunatii sheria na tunafata mambo yote kulingana na katiba yetu. Kwa hivyo bila kupoteza wakati leo ningependa sasa kwa rai Kenya itazidi kudumisha wa Kenya wote haswa wale wako hapa kwale tuinuke na tumkaribishe Rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya kwa shangwe na vigelegele ili awe na nafasi ya kutubia. Moja, mili, tatu, mweshmiwa Rais. Asante, asante. Asante ni sana, tafadhali tunaweza kukati chini. Thank you very much. Yongozi wote wenzangu na watu wa kwale hamjambo Kwale hamjambo Kwale asalamu alaikum Bwana Yesu asifiwe Similani Mjisimila Malamazo Mbula ya pevo Mloga anji Mloga anji Similani Ndugu watu wa kwale Kwanza nataka ni wapongeze Wananchi wa kwale na wananchi wa taifa letu tunayo ipenda Kenya Kwa kutukaribisha katika sherehe hii ya mashujaa 2024 hapa kwale 
nataka ni mpongeze viongozi wote waliofika hapa nataka ni mpongeze pia ama ni wapongeze pia viongozi wote wa kwale hii wakiongozwa na mama governor Fatuma Achana kama kungekuwa na taswishi yoyote kwamba mama muislamu anaweza kuwa kiongozi na awe governor sasa hiyo taswishi imeondoka kwa sababu Fatuma Achani ni governor wetu wa hapa kwani We can now confirm without a doubt that women leadership has a firm place in the Republic of Kenya. Pia leo asubuhi tumekuwa na jambo la kihistoria tena. Kwa mara ya kwanza katika taifa letu mwanajeshi mama kuongoza sherehe hii Luteni Kanali Faith Mwangandi huyo mama hapo mpigie makofi jameni Kudhihirisha tena kwamba mama wanaweza kufanya kazi zote And that is why we The people of Kenya are proud defenders of our freedom and aspire to become and remain free and sovereign. These were the foremost attributes of the first generation of freedom fighters who faced the monster of imperial domination with unflinching courage and commitment to prevail even if it cost them everything including their very lives. From them we have a fine model that has inspired generations of selfless patriots and continues to inspire us today as we do our part in nation building. From them we have learned that to be free we must be united as one family that draws its strength from the unique contribution of its diverse members and that we must see each other as equals treat each other justly and leave no one behind we the people of Kenya know that just like our ancestors we have what it takes including the values principles and commitments that define ushuja to break free of oppression, humiliation, poverty and indignity. We know this because for our nation to be free, brave men and women, young and old from every community and every region struggled with exemplary determination until Kenya was free. We know this because everywhere you go in Kenya the echoes of heroism histories of sacrifice and legacies of historic struggle by ordinary people who achieved extraordinarily endure to date our heroes did not hail from one village or speak one language our heroes are numerous and diverse united by a principled commitment to confront an unjust exclusive and oppressive system in pursuit of a noble vision of national liberation this unity of purpose motivated the icon of courage mekatilili wa mwenza and her generation of champions from every part of kenya to resist colonialism as well as ronald gala and his fellow freedom fighters who advocated independence and decentralized government which was an early fashion of devolution in confronting colonialism mekatilili wamenza did not seek to free her village 
or region from occupation by a community. Instead, she resisted the structures and institutions of a system of exploitation and tyranny in the knowledge that defeating it would free a whole nation. This is the same spirit embraced by our freedom fighters, such as Otenyo Nyamantere and Mora Ngiti from Kisi. Wanameme Masinde in Bungoma, Oigo Paul Agwech and Oyuko Fipi Ambio in Kisumu, Igogi Teresa Kiambi in Meru, Kalondu Mathe Kambalu in Makweni, and many others. The great lesson that has been passed down to us from their era and which we must faithfully transmit clearly and boldly to the future generations is that every citizen of Kenya is a full and equal member of our political community entitled to make a contribution to nation building and with an inalienable right to a full, just and fair share of all the benefits that accrue from our development. No proposition to discriminate or to unjustly diminish one while enlarging another's right is admissible anywhere. Therefore, any formula seeking to exclude, alienate, or disenfranchise any person, group of community, for any reason, is repugnant to the very essence of our nationhood. We are one people, and Kenya is one united, indivisible, and sovereign nation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, freedom came at great cost and was won against overwhelming odds. It called for a capacity to embrace immense sacrifice and willingness to pay the ultimate price. We remember them and appreciate their sacrifices. We recognize their achievements and acknowledge that the nation we have today, with its past history and future prospects, is a legacy of their work, commitment, and life. Every day, the Constitution commands us to honor our freedom fighters who struggled heroically to bring freedom and justice to our land by living up to the spirit of Ushuja in the way we relate with one another, pursue our vocations, and build our nation. Article 10 of the Constitution shows us how to be Mashuja in our own way, day by day, every day. The freedom fighters were inspired by enduring universal principles and values which have transcended generations and live with us today. Unity, sharing, integrity, courage, determination and patriotism are our sources of strength in the face of difficulty, risk and danger. The struggle for freedom is the overwhelming and everlasting mission of humanity because in freedom lies the opportunity to achieve peace and democracy, health and wealth, justice and dignity, equality and inclusion, as well as unity in the pursuit of prosperity individually and collectively. Freedom is the key that opens the door to sustainable progress in every sector. That is why today we are a modern competitive economy and a devolved democratic society. Our freedom has allowed us the space to grow and perfect our nationhood, sustaining the spirit of freedom to evolve from the monopoly of liberation movement into a dynamic, pluralistic society where competition makes us stronger. Since the ultimate goal of freedom is sustainable development, the heroic struggle of our time must focus on achieving this through inclusive growth. 
The Ushuja of our era calls for urgent mobilization to create wealth and jobs, reduce poverty and inequality, and protect our environment. The dedication we bring to these tasks will determine how well we uphold the legacy of Makadilili, Wamenza, and other freedom fighters. This fact is abundantly clear to us. The persistent unemployment, severe poverty, increasing inequality, and general growth underdevelopment are not only undesirable, but are also an acceptable derogation from the legacy of our mashuja and the spirit of our intergenerational commitment to freedom. Recognizing this, the government formulated a plan aimed at enhancing dignity and security, creating wealth and expanding opportunities by increasing investments in infrastructure development, essential service delivery, and the productivity of key strategic sectors. The bottom-up economic transformation agenda is Kenya's economic freedom charter, which mobilizes unprecedented levels of investment into the most impactful sectors in providing essential public services inclusively and affordably, multiplying incomes and creating millions of new good jobs for our many well-educated and highly skilled young people. The priority sectors identified as the strategic pillars of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda have enabled us to galvanize the national development agenda by mobilizing local and foreign investments, significantly improving the reach, efficiency, and impact of services, and creating jobs at a sustained incremental rate. We are driving agricultural transformation through major interventions across all value chains, including fisheries and aquaculture, horticulture and food crops, livestock, beekeeping and rangeland development. Investments are being made to boost production and supply of quality inputs, provide extension services, reduce post-harvest losses and maximize returns for producers. These efforts are aimed to increase economies of scale through aggregation, agro-processing, value addition, and exports. Let me announce to farmers across Kenya that we have just concluded the process of procuring the next consignments of fertilizer and assure them that the fertilizer that we have will continue to retail at 2,500 as we committed ourselves. Whether it is tea, whether it is coffee, whether it is maize, whether it is wheat, whether it is sugarcane, we will make sure that prices of fertilizer are universal because we have seen its impact on matters food productivity in Kenya and the lowering of the cost of living as a result of reduction of food prices because of enhanced supply. Fellow citizens, in the digital economy, we have invested in developing digital and ICT hubs in all worlds and expanding last mile fiber connectivity across the country, reaching areas previously considered remote and underserved. I must congratulate members of parliament across Kenya for being partners with us in this effort. And I want to encourage all our members of parliament to front load and to prioritize the construction of ICT hubs across Kenya so that we can give digital opportunities for our young people. Because these efforts have enabled young digital creators, entrepreneurs, and workers to access opportunities not just locally, but also globally. We have also supported our Mamamboga, the border border operators, small-scale traders, construction workers, and others working in the informal and the hustler economy by investing in financial inclusion through accessible loans, capacity building, and regulatory reforms to facilitate their growth. I want to commend 
the banking industry for extending just last week an additional 150 billion in loans and loan facilities to micro, small, and medium enterprises to complement our efforts in making sure that we attend to the people lower in the category. To achieve universal health coverage, we have transformed the provision of health care to enable all Kenyans access promotive and preventive services in addition to curative services. First, under an all-inclusive social health framework and also through programs like Afia Bora Mashinani, which has onboarded over 100,000 community health promoters who provide health care directly to people in their homes. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks the conclusion of Bomayangu Week, launched last Monday to celebrate the achievement of our affordable housing program. Throughout the week, we showcased significant progress in advancing this ambition, ambitious agenda, which aims to transform lives and livelihoods by providing affordable, decent homes for millions of Kenyans. On this Mashuja Day, we recognize key initiatives such as the Kenya Urban Resilience Project, the Kenya Informal Settlements Improvement Project, and the National Climate Resilience Program, otherwise known as Climate Works. Under our bottom-up economic transformation agenda, we are committed to striking a major blow for the freedom struggle of our time by eradicating the shame of hunger in the land of plenty, taking decisive measures to significantly reduce poverty, providing all Kenyans with high quality health care and enhancing dignity, well-being and standards of living for everyone. The affordable housing program is central to these efforts with a target of delivering 200,000 homes annually to meet the growing demands of housing. This initiative aims to tackle the deficit that has left many Kenyans living in insecure, unsanitary, and poorly contracted dwellings, and also fostering the growth of sustainable communities and generating jobs and opportunities across many other sectors. We all know that the future is urban. 60% of our population, not just in Kenya, but globally, will be living in urban areas. That is not a choice we can make. That is what's going to happen. But we can make a choice as to what kind of living, what kind of settlements, these 60% of our citizens who will be living in urban areas, how they will live. Either they will live in slums or they will live in decent dwellings. It is our choice and the choice of our generation to make sure that when we undergo this process, which is inevitable, and we have communities that are urban, they will be living in decent livelihoods. The progress so far is remarkable. 124,000 housing units are at different stages of completion across 75 sites in 37 counties. These projects include homes also for the military, police, and correctional services. I am happy that the students have participated in designing student accommodation. And congratulations to the students who came, the 60 of you who have participated in that process. Here in Kwale County, I am also happy that the Matuga Affordable Housing Project is underway, creating daily employment for over 200 workers. Similarly, the Diani White House project is under construction and is also generating more jobs and more opportunities. Bomayangu, a key platform in the program, exemplifies our commitment to economic empowerment and improving Kenya's quality of life. This online portal aggregates housing demand with over 547 registered users 
of whom 52,000 have collected have collectively saved more than 2.3 billion towards home ownership. These numbers represent real individuals striving to achieve their home ownership dreams. For example, Joseph Cairo from Ruiru, who began saving on Bomayangu Hasa and has now accumulated an impressive 895,000, more than half the cost of a one bedroom unit. Similarly, Jemima Nyaboke, a businesswoman living with disability in Nairobi, has saved 650,000, steadily and surely bringing herself closer to home ownership. Jane Mumbi Mushina, a widow and a mother of two from Nakuru, will soon move from her rented unit, which costs 1,500 monthly, to her own one-bedroom home after patiently and with determination saving for it. Likewise, David Gagiri, a 44-year-old Juakali artisan and a father of four, is rearing and nearing the completion of his savings to move into his own house. These stories illustrate how the, over, how the affordable housing program is empowering ordinary citizens, affirming their dignity and opening pathways for financial independence. In December this year, just a few months from now, we will achieve a major milestone by handing over 1,080 new studio units at the Mukuru Meteorological Site in Nairobi with mortgages priced at 3,200 per month. This is to citizens who today pay the same amount but live in a slum rent that does not qualify them to own the dwelling finally. The revolutionary dimension of this milestone is that finally mortgages will no longer be the vocabulary of a lucky few but an accessible, feasible and convenient instrument of bottom-up empowerment making home ownership affordable and therefore attainable. The program's benefits extend beyond housing. So far, the affordable housing program has created over 160,000 jobs throughout the housing value chain. While the industry remains predominantly male, we are working to increase female participation to 30%, up from the current 20%. Our collaboration with the Juakali sector has demonstrated the affordable housing program significant potential to transform local manufacturing. In Kwale, over 200, over 200 artisans are providing essential services at various sites, fabricating components such as doors, windows, and cabinet fittings. The success of involving worker cooperatives and artisans has strengthened our commitment to support local businesses. You heard the governor of Kwale enumerate the number of companies that now work with us. To facilitate this further, the government has allocated Kenya shillings 4.4 billion specifically for payments to MSMEs supplying goods and services under this program. I was especially proud to witness the signing of the 720 million subcontract awarded to Soweto High Rise Fabricators and Woodworkers Association in Kibra, just the event that you saw us here this morning. This partnership will greatly enhance the business prospects of these Juakali associations, now recognized as bona fide affordable housing program suppliers. Ladies and gentlemen, on this day, it is important for us to remember that the objective of the freedom struggle was for the citizens of Kenya to have full rights 
and opportunities to live in dignity and achieve a high standard of living with security, health, and wealth. As we implement affordable housing program, therefore, we must at the same time move quickly to complement it with initiatives that promote health and well-being and secure work and livelihoods. Thus, healthcare remains a priority under our bottom-up economic transformation agenda. We are advancing the scope of the universal health coverage to give every Kenyan access to promotive, preventive, curative, and emergency services. Through the Social Health Insurance Fund, citizens will contribute and access comprehensive healthcare benefits. And those who are categorized as not being able to pay, the government of Kenya will step in and pay for them. The value for money in this scheme will be undeniable once the migration from the National Health Insurance Fund is completed and the fund is fully operational. As of the beginning of this month, 12.9 million Kenyans were registered with the Social Health Authority and all public health institutions and alongside 50% of private facilities were already enrolled to provide services. I urge private hospitals to expedite the contracting process to enable us complete the final rollout of the universal health coverage. To accelerate this rollout, the government of Kenya has released 3 billion shillings to settle outstanding payments to hospitals and other service providers. I know this has been a major concern for hospitals that are owed by the former NHIF a lot of money. I want to give them my assurance that from next week, we have already released the money that will go into settling some of the debts that have held back their services under our new program. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the time for doubt and anxiety is slowly but surely getting behind us. And the space for criticism, skepticism, and pessimism is over. Real change ushers us into unfamiliar places. Transformative change overturns old assumptions and unlocks unprecedented possibilities. Every step into the future takes a measure of courage, and the comfort of the familiar can become a temptation to hesitate or backslide. We have been here before, Kenyans, times without number. Many Kenyans were anxious about the prospects of the freedom struggle and doubted the capacity of our freedom fighters to defeat the formidable power of the empire. Some were afraid that what they saw as an uncertain future in an independent nation in contrast with the very real, if undesirable, present in an oppressive colony. Later, when challenging the single party monopoly, many worried that embracing democratic pluralism might destabilize the country and lead to state collapse. More recently, some hesitated as we took a leap of faith into a new dispensation, fearing that devolution could fragment the nation and that strong checks and balances might render the republic ungovernable. Despite these concerns, here we are, stronger than ever, facing the future with greater confidence and building a strong nation that is respected for its positive contribution, not just at home, not just regionally, but also globally. Independence, multi-party democracy, and our progressive constitution have made Kenya stronger enabling our country to move forward and upwards, even in the midst of unprecedented challenges. What we have learned from Kenya's history of freedom struggle is this. We must not allow the fear of change to imprison us in the past. 
and we must have greater faith in our collective capacity to achieve inclusive transformation and usher in progress that leaves no one behind. I call on all Kenyans, I call on all Kenyans to have faith and a little patience. In matters of weeks, or in a matter of weeks, Shiv will be serving us efficiently and making the dream of universal coverage come true. I am aware that during this transition period, employees of the former National Hospital Insurance Fund will be managed in accordance with the provisions of the Social Health Insurance Act of 2023. I want to assure all the former employees and those now serving under our new outfit that no one will lose their jobs. And that I appreciate their dedication and service during this transition. We will make sure that everybody who has served in the former outfit is transitioned into the current outfit. We have implemented strong institutional and strategic measures to extend the impact of universal health coverage by developing the biomedical, pharmaceutical, and medical supplies production industries to enhance healthcare delivery and ensure the security of medical supplies, the government of Kenya is improving the overall supply chain, starting with capacity upgrades and the establishment of Kenya Medical Supplies Agency regional distribution centers in Kisumu, Mbakasi, and Mombasa. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kiswahili saying, Mgaga na upwa, Hali wali mkavu is an understated hint of the promise held by our blue economy. Because of the Indian Ocean, Kwale County and coastal region as a whole abound with transformative opportunities of an immense magnitude. At present, the blue economy contributes 20 billion to the economy annually and is expected to increase to over 80 billion in five years. This transformation will create thousands of jobs and stimulate regional economy through increased investment in various industries, enhanced export, man, uh, enhanced export manufacturing, and expanded overall economic activity. To begin with, we are investing Kenya shillings 2.7 billion in the construction of fish landing sites and markets equipped with cold storage facilities across the country with 1.2 billion allocated specifically to the coast region. Additionally, we are releasing 1.7 billion in grants to support 612 fishing cooperatives and groups in the region. I must commend the Ministry of Mining and Blue Economy for an excellent job that they are undertaking. The Shimoni port, Kenya's first dedicated fish port, is now 82% complete. I came to start that project months ago. I'm very happy with the progress that is made. Once finished, it will boost the fishing industry by increasing the handling capacity by 50,000 metric tons of fish annually, thereby promoting value addition for both domestic and export market. To promote and enhance aquaculture and mariculture in the country, the government is investing 2.4 billion, including 1.4 billion allocated specifically for the coast region in the development of the National Mariculture Resource and Training Center in Shimoni, here in Kuala County. This center will serve as a catalyst for the growth of productive and profitable mariculture. It will function as a marine fish seed breeding and multiplication center, facilitate research and innovation in mariculture, and offer training for fish farmers and students. 
to increase fish production and facilitate the transition of fisher folk to deep water and exclusive economic zone fishing, the government has procured and distributed 123 fishing boats to local communities. And additionally, we plan to acquire deep sea fishing vessels for offshore fishing with a total budget of Kenya shilling 600 million allocated for this purpose this year. Ladies and gentlemen, the affordable housing program, healthcare reforms, and blue economy investments go beyond infrastructure. They embody our commitment to dignity opportunity and prosperity for many Kenyans. We invite the private sector to join us and drive up the scale of these initiatives to provide opportunities for more Kenyans to take part in achieving lasting transformation. Together, we are building a brighter future where every Kenyan has the opportunity to thrive and winning the freedom struggle of our time. Let us remember the example of our first Mashuja and be inspired by their values, achievements, and legacy. Let us do our part to promote national cohesion and inclusion and to combat division, tribalism, and exclusion. Let us remember that without unity, our freedom and our future would be under threat. Together, we are unstoppable in pursuit of our aspirations and immovable in the face of any challenge. By embodying, championing, and defending our national values and principles of governance every day, we will be able to live up to the monumental legacy of Mekatilili Wamenza and other heroic men and women who blazed the trail for the patriots who followed and built a nation that present and future generations will be proud of. I am encouraged by the bravery, diligence, and loyalty with which Kenyans of all walks of life undertake their profession and social tasks, fighting crime and terrorism, defending the nation's territorial integrity, treating the sick, feeding the nation, teaching our children, and serving the needs of underprivileged citizens. To you all, I convey the gratitude and appreciation of all Kenyans. It is in these things that heroism lies. The fact that we must do them every day doesn't make them any less heroic or extraordinary. Ushuja is doing ordinary things in extraordinary ways. Therefore, whatever our vocation, let us apply ourselves with zeal, because that is how great nations are built. Ladies and gentlemen, watu wakwale, ndugu zangu, watu wa Kenya. Nimefurai sana kuwa kati yenu katika sherehe hii ya muhimu. Sote tukiungana na tukihakikisha kwamba kazi ya kila mtu isidharauliwe na mwingine. Wale wote mnaochangia katika sehemu zote yule unayesukuma pale wilbaro ili tuweze kujenga affordable housing yule unayepiga randa ndio tuweze kuwa na milango na madirisha na mambo mengine ambayo yatatusaidia kuwa na manyumba ya sawasawa walimu pale shuleni mnapojitolea kufundisha watoto wetu wakulima shambani wanaofanya bidii ndio tupate chakula askari wetu ambao wanasimamia usalama wa taifa letu la Kenya